Protein synthesis. Let's make it simple for understanding. Just how for a computer to perform a task, you need to give it commands and instructions. The same way our genes give the instructions on how to make proteins. This little strand of DNA which makes up the gene is what gives information to string together a bunch of amino acids. A bunch of such amino acids bonded together is what essentially makes a protein. DNA is made up of four bases, A, T, C and G. A only pairs with T and C only pairs with G. The next thing to notice is that they are grouped in three, forming a triplet code, each coding for one amino acid. Every chunk of three bits of DNA has information for what amino acid belongs next in the protein chain. Now when the time comes to give the information to create a protein, the DNA can't really go anywhere to be read. It needs to be protected, so it stays within the nucleus. So here's what happens next. First of all, part of the DNA strand is going to unzip by an enzyme called RNA polymerase and will move aside, leaving the other half exposed. And then this next piece, which is similar to DNA, comes and joins in. The C joins with the G, the A joins with the T, and this continues onward. Now remember, this strand is not DNA, it is mRNA, which means messenger RNA. Do notice in this new strand, there is no base T. Instead, it's just been replaced with U, but it's basically doing the same job. Now what happens is, the mRNA is going to leave the nucleus and go to a ribosome in the cytoplasm, which is the site for protein synthesis. Here comes in another important RNA molecule we need, called transfer RNA or tRNA. Each tRNA has three bases at the bottom and depending on those, a specific amino acid attached to it on the top. Now remember, we've got a lot of different types of amino acids and is there a specific structure and order in the chain which determines what kind of protein will be made. Now moving forward, the tRNA molecule is going to align itself with the mRNA at the right place in the ribosome and this will determine where that amino acid is going to appear on the protein chain. This will happen again at the next place, determining the next amino acid. A peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids joining them together. Remember that the DNA and RNA molecules are much longer than what they are shown here. This will continue on and on and on. As a result, thousands of amino acids join together, making a protein.